All right, so how do we get past the gatekeeper when we're cold calling? That is the script that we have been using inside of our own agency when we are running Mortgage AI. When saying your service, we do not say marketing or advertising because remember, you are the 17th person today that has been calling them up, offering to get them more leads or offering to help with their marketing or their advertising, right? Mentioning the gatekeeper's name in that first line is gonna realistically create like a subconscious connection between you two and subtly increase the likelihood of them putting you on. Now, after you get the email address, if you don't have the gatekeeper's name, and this is extremely important, if you have the gatekeeper's name, you can forget about this, but if you don't have the gatekeeper's name, I need you to ask this. Listen, I know how frustrating it is to be dialing all day long. Maybe your pickup rates aren't even that high. And then you do get a pickup rate It's the gatekeeper and you get excited only to have him or her shut you down because she doesn't want you speaking with the decision maker. And all, in all honesty, I don't really blame her, right? Think about it. If you're in any ways today market with how saturated things are, you know, she's probably getting 10 to 15 cold calls a day from marketers just like you. And it's in her best interest to not let you through the phone and to not let you disrupt the decision maker's time. So if it's so saturated, if so many people are cold calling, how do we stand out? In this video, I'm going to share with you three different scripts that you can use to get past the gatekeeper. Script number one is going to be if you have their name, exactly what to say to really encourage that gatekeeper to actually want to pass you on to the decision maker. Script number two is going to be if you don't have the decision maker's name. And script number three, which is arguably the most valuable and important script that you're going to get, it's exactly what you can say and what you can do if the gatekeeper rejects you to actually come around on the back end and set up a meeting with the decision maker himself. And lastly, if you stay at the end of the video, got a couple of bonuses in there that I'm going to share with you that if applied to your overall outreach campaign could easily two to three X the amount of appointments that you are booking. Now, the reason I make this video is because inside of our free school community, and you can click the link below to join, we host two weekly calls. And on that calls recently, probably the most common question that we've been asking is how do we get past the gatekeeper? And I know with the market saturation, it has become a prevalent problem. But about two weeks ago, I shared the exact techniques that we used in our own agency with a member in the school community. And when he went to apply it, he instantly started booking way more meetings than he was before and was actually able to sign his first client by using this method. So that's why I wanted to jump on here, share this with you guys. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to go through the scripts and I'm also going to teach you how to deliver the scripts so you can effectively set appointments in any niche, no matter who the gatekeeper is. All right. So here we have it. Script number one is when you have the name. So the gatekeeper script with the name. So before calling, you should always get their name. And I know sometimes I hear it all the time. I'm using Apollo, I'm using D7 Lead Finder, I'm using Zoom Info and it doesn't come with the name. It may not come with the name, but in 16 seconds, you can type in the company name in Google and then owner. And realistically, very likely, there's gonna be an about page that pops up, a LinkedIn profile that pops up, something will pop up and then you'll be able to get the name. And that 16 seconds of work that you're putting in before you make the call can be the difference of two to three X on the output or the likelihood of you actually booking the meeting. So I strongly recommend that before you make your dials, you take the 16, 17 seconds name to input the business name and then owner into Google and find the owner's name. And so let's say you've done that, you got the name and now you've cold calling. So the gatekeeper answer, and there's two different scripts that you can hit depending on how they actually answer the phone. Number one is, hey, it's your name. So, hey, it's Dylan. I'm just calling back. I like to use the word just calling back to imply that we're already in communication. I'm already in communication with the decision maker. Could you please put me on to owner name? Could you please put me on to John Smith? Or ideally, and this is even better if you can do this. If the gatekeeper answer and says, hey, this is Rebecca from XYZ Company. How can I help you today? Right? Oh, hey, Rebecca, it's Dylan. I'm just calling you guys back. Could you please put me on to John Smith? Mentioning the gatekeeper's name in that first line is going to realistically create like a subconscious connection between you two and subtly increase the likelihood of them putting you on. If the gatekeeper does ask who's calling, you can say, tell him it's Dylan. Is he in right now? Right? Taking control of the conversation, not leaving it open for her to ask more questions, but to instead take control of the conversation and ask her the question first is going to increase the chances of you getting through. And, the, and if the gatekeeper still wants to persist and still want to ask, what company are you calling from? You can say, oh, it's Wilson Media. John Smith should be familiar with us and I don't mind holding. Thank you. Right? Being very firm, being very you know confident as you're going through this script. So to go through it in one fluid motion here, the gatekeeper answers, hey, hey, Rebecca, it's Dylan. I'm just calling you guys back. Could you please put me on to John Smith? Oh, who's calling? Tell, tell him it's Dylan. Is he in right now? 
gatekeeper asks, oh, what company are you calling from? Wilson Media. John Smith should be familiar with us, and I don't mind holding. Thank you very much. That is the script that we have been using inside of our own agency when we are running Mortgage AI, and that we've been giving out to members in our free cool community that have been having success with it. Now, let's say you did the work into Google, or and you weren't able to find their name, or you're just too fucking lazy and didn't want to do that, so you weren't going to try cold calling with no name. It's not the end of the world. Here is how you want to approach when you don't have their name. Hey, gatekeeper name, always if possible, right? If possible, you do get their name. It's Dylan here. I'm just calling you guys back. Again, the I'm calling you guys back line in regards to service. Now, when saying your service, we do not say marketing or advertising because remember, you are the 17th person today that has been calling them up, offering to get them more leads or offering to help with their marketing or their advertising, right? Those are buzzwords that are going to trigger the gatekeeper into knowing exactly what this is about and hanging up the phone, brushing you off and not letting you speak with the decision maker. But instead, if we be more specific and especially we want to be specific around topics that the gatekeeper probably doesn't know much about, it's going to be like, oh, okay, he's calling. There's a very specific reason that he's calling about. Um, I don't know. I, I think I heard them talk about that at some point, but I don't really know much about it. So I'm just going to move them on. Right. So being more specific looks like instead of saying, hey, it's about your marketing, i.e. it's about your Google AdWords account. It's your meta, meta business account, web hosting account, backend marketing account. So what this looks like in motion is, hey, Rebecca, it's still in here. I'm just calling you guys back in regards to your meta business account. Right calling you back in regards to your meta business account. Okay. Now from there, without you letting her speak next, I need to speak with the owner or the person who handles this, right? So in one fluid motion, Hey, Rebecca, it's still in here. I'm just calling you back in regards to your meta business account. I need to speak with the owner or person who handles this, right? You don't want to have a lot of this upward infliction. Like you're unsure. It's like, Hey, I'm calling you guys back. It's affirmative downward inflicting tones at the end of it. You're not questioning. You're not curious. You're not like, I don't know if I'm calling the right person. It's like, no, I'm calling you because I'm the right person. I need to speak with this person. It's about your meta business account. Can you send me on to them? Okay. If they ask what company are you calling from? Again, you can reply with your company name. Um, they're familiar with us and I don't mind holding. So again, what that looks like, Wilson Media, they're familiar with us and I don't mind holding. Thank you very much. Right. Being firm, having downward reflecting toes and saying this with confidence is the script that we're using to get through gatekeepers when we don't have the name. Now, if you get rejected, if, oh, he's busy, oh, he's not in right now, oh, he's on vacation, whatever the case may be. If you are rejected, do not sweat it. And more importantly, do not move on. Many times it will actually take three to four touch points until you can actually set a meeting with the decision maker, whether that be calls, whether that be emails or a combination of the two. So in the rest of this video here, I'm going to walk you through how we're turning these rejections into meetings on the calendar. And then at last, I'm going to share with you a couple bonus things that you can do if you apply to your entire campaign will dramatically increase the amount of appointments that you book. So script number three is that if they you get something along the lines of he's busy, et cetera. Oh, oh, that's not a problem. Why don't I send you guys an email that he can read when he gets back, right? That's a very like easy out, right? Because realistically, like what is she probably going to say? Oh, could you send this an email, right? Well, you say that to them and you what you're going to do is you're going to dramatically lower her guard. She thinks like, okay, thank God my job's done here. I'm getting this guy off the phone. Gatekeeper is going to say, okay, now here's powerful psychology language pattern that you want to use when you are getting this email. Awesome. Well, I don't want to create any extra work for you positioning this to be in her best benefit, positioning it to be in her best benefit is a very powerful thing. It looks like you're doing her a favor. Listen, I don't want to create any extra work for you. So could you just quickly give me his email address and I'll write him a short email delivering him all the information I was calling back to give. Awesome. And so when you say that, you know, the likelihood of you actually getting an email address is extremely high. People will give out email addresses like free coupons. It's like, it's not a big deal. You're going to get the email address. And you've also further incentivized her by positioning that her giving him the email address is going to create less work for him. And then also it's not going to be a burden to the decision maker because you're writing a short email. Okay. Now, after you get the email address, if you don't have the gatekeeper's name, and this is extremely important, if you have the gatekeeper's name, you can forget about this. But if you don't have the gatekeeper's name, I need you to ask this. Awesome. Thanks so much. Oh, and I, I didn't catch your name, question mark. And she's going to say, oh, it's Rebecca, oh, it's Ashley, or whatever the gatekeeper's name is. Right? Awesome, Ashley. We'll have an amazing day, and I'll chat with you guys soon. 
and then you end the call. But the reason that you catch your name, the reason that you make sure that you get the gatekeeper's name is because of what you're about to do after you've hung up the phone. After you've hung up the phone, you're going to write a follow-up email. And you want, in this email, you want to add in as much relevant information as possible from the cold call that you've got. And now it's going to look like this. Hey, owner name, like, hey, John Smith, I just spoke with gatekeeper name and she referred me to you. That is why it is extremely important to collect the gatekeeper's name because you want to email the decision maker from the angle of, hey, I was just referred by this person in your company to speak with you. And that's dramatically going to increase your open rates, dramatically increase your conversion rates, and dramatically going to increase your response rates because it's coming across as a referral email and not a cold email. After you've hit them with that opener, you can use the cold email script that I've shared in a few of my videos uh, where you start by introducing your offer. You don't want to say leads. You don't want to say appointments. You don't want to say clients. You want to use industry-specific language, state the dream outcome without pain. I can X without you Y. If possible, do so in a case study format. Here are two quick examples that you can steal from right now. Call to action, you want to keep it soft. Mind if I share more info? And with a PS line, you can add social proof and or guarantee. So here's what there was. this would look like in action. Hey, owner name, I just spoke with Rebecca and she referred me to you. She referred me because... We recently helped case study increase their show rate from 30, 40, 92% using our AI smart appointment setting CRM without them having to do anything. Mind if I share more info? P.S. If you don't, you don't pay a thing, right? So this is just a random example that I made up. If maybe you were a revenue optimizations agency helping people with show rates and things like that. And so that is the email format that you want to use as the follow-up email. Again, referring to the gatekeeper name as it's a referral email. And lastly, just as I said up here, any additional relevant information that you collected on that cold call, you want to sprinkle into here. So the decision maker knows that it's highly relevant, highly personal and super direct to the specific company and problems that they have. Now, a couple things here for the bonus notes and these applied to your overall campaign will dramatically increase the amount of appointments that you're able to book through this approach is number one, never pitch the gatekeeper. Okay. Do not give the gatekeeper as much information at all. The more information that you give, the more likely she's able to figure out that, oh, this is just some guy trying to pitch me more marketing services like the 13 other people that have called me today. And the less likely you are ever going to get actually in touch with the decision maker. So as best as possible, keep things vague, keep things urgent, keep things, you know, keep mentioning things that she doesn't really understand, like meta business account, Google AdWords account, uh, you know, web hosting domains or whatever the case may be, right? Things that she wouldn't actually know. Second thing is another very valuable thing that you can do is you can run a cold call and a cold email campaign simultaneously. So what this looks like is, you know, maybe in the first half of the week, you're cold emailing all of your leads, like you're cold emailing your entire leads list. And then the second half of the week or simultaneously, you're cold calling the same people that you cold emailed. And when you are contacting the decision maker, when you're contacting the uh, gatekeeper, you can say, oh, hey, I'm just calling you back in regards to our conversation on email, in regards to that email that we are talking about on XYZ date, on last Tuesday, on last Wednesday. And that right there will A, give you two channels, two attempts to, to book a meeting because you now you have the cold call approach and the cold email approach. And second of all, increase the likelihood of you actually getting through because there has been prior communication set. There's been prior communication set with you and the business and you can pull that up. You can mention that to increase the likelihood of them getting you passed. Now, the second thing here, or the third thing here, sorry, is follow up with gatekeepers multiple times if you don't get a response. And so what I mean by that is like, if you don't get a response or if you get through to the gatekeeper or you, you don't get through the gatekeeper, you speak with the, you, you send the email, but you don't hear with them, make sure that you're following up at least three to five times, like via calling them back and also via email. So if you're using like smart lead or anything like that, this is super easy. Just create a three to five uh, email sequence where you can automatically put them in and it'll follow up with people like every two days. And if you're doing it, and from the cold calling perspective, making sure to call them back every second day, if you're not getting through to, you know, kind of re-engage that conversation and continuously pushing them through. And you can add a little bit more scarcity. You can add a little bit more urgency each and every single time that you call them back. And the last thing here is to always, always, always follow up with email. Doesn't matter if you set the appointment, doesn't matter if you didn't set the appointment, doesn't matter if you got shut down with the gatekeeper. If you just simply take the time, and I recommend that you set up a CRM, which can do this automatically. I know Close CRM can do this, where after every call, you can click what happened on the call and it'll automatically send out an email around a template that you've created around the context of what happened on that call. 
that will dramatically increase the overall amount of appointments that you book by following that premise. Alrighty guys, so that's the end of this script. I'm gonna have this script down in the description so you can take this, deal with this, you can use this and you can use it to set more appointments for your agency and as a result, make more money. Now, if you remember at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that we have a free school community where myself and my business partner hop on twice a week to live coach you guys with everything that you would need from setting appointments, closing appointments and service delivery to help you reach your first million dollars online with a marketing agency. You can click the link below to apply to join that. It's 100% free, but we do accept people on an application only basis. Other than that, guys, I appreciate you tons for watching the video. I hope you got 10x the value in comparison to the time that you invested and I'll see you guys in the next video.